Welcome to the series of Relational Database Management System. Myself is Fatima Rafiq, Assistant Professor, Abedan Amda Senior College, BCA Department. We have already started with the concurrency control mechanism. We have seen in the last lecture what is two-phase rocking protocol and its variation. Today, we will be starting with a new topic that is timestamp based protocol. As we say that concurrency control mechanism is a mechanism where we have a multiple transaction which are executed simultaneously and we want the one transaction should not interfere the another transaction. For that particular purpose as the first method which you can use is a log based protocol. The log, log based protocol uses one variable lock for maintaining the concurrency. Another uh, method in the concurrency control mechanism is nothing but the timestamp method. Timestamp method is the method where we are using or we are taking the help of timestamps for maintaining the concurrency control in the transactions. With each transaction TI in the system a fixed value called timestamp is associated. It denoted by TS of TI. This timestamp is assigned by data item sy database system before TI starts its execution. If transaction TI is assigned a timestamp TS of TI, a new transaction TJ enter the system, then TS of TI should be less than TS of TJ. We can use a system lock or a logical counter as a timestamp for a transaction. If TS of TI is less than TS of TJ, then in the serial TI must appear before TJ. What is this TI or TJ or TS? So TS is timestamp. Uh, like for example, in the normal um, simple language, we can say that this is one system time which is assigned to a transactions. Like for example, if I have transaction T1, T2 and T3. If transaction T1 starts at 10.30, I'll be giving a TS as 10.30 to transaction T1. And then after, like T2 transaction come at 10.35. So I'll be giving one time to a transaction T2, which is 10.35. That 10.30 10 and 10.35 is nothing but the timestamp, which is given by a system. So if the transaction T1 come first, it will be having a timestamp less than T2. That is the statement which is stated before. A T T1 should appear before the T2 because T1 come first. So we have like first come first of uh, facility where if T1 transaction come first and if it is having a timestamp uh, less than the T2 transaction. So T1 transaction has to execute it first and then T2 transaction will execute. So based on if this time stamp criteria if we manage the concurrency control we s that is nothing but the concurrency control by using the timestamp method for each data item q two stamp two timestamp value are associated with because we know that whenever the transaction is executing the data item is either lock for a reading purpose or lock for a writing purpose so that's why we will be having a two a variation of timestamp one is the writing timestamp another is reading timestamp what is writing timestamp which is it is denoted by w underscore timestamp of q it denotes the larger timestamp of any transaction that executed write q successfully if we have n number of transactions and let's consider they were using the same data item so write timestamp is the largest value of the timestamp where the queue, uh, write operation is executed successfully. Like for example, consider I have T1, T2 and T3. T1 is having timestamp 10.30. T2 is having 10.35 and T3 is having 10.40. And the uh, T3 transaction is executing the write operation. So the write will have a value 10.40. So the write stamp, uh, write Timestamp will have a value 1040. Why? Because it is the largest value where the write operation is executed by the transaction T3. 
So like you can imagine multiple transaction executing. So uh, who is the last who executed the write operation successfully? That timestamp will be assigned to write timestamp. Then we have another type of timestamp which is called reading timestamp. It denotes the largest timestamp of any transaction that executed read successfully. It is same as write. Again consider the situation where I have T1, T2 and T3. T1 is having timestamp 10.30, T2 is having 10.35 and T3 is having 10.40. And let's consider in the situation. Again T3 is the transaction, the current transaction which is executing read of Q successfully. So what the read timestamp will be? It is 1040. So the largest value of timestamp where the transaction is executed queue successfully will assign to the read timestamp of that particular item. Wherever the new read or write instruction is executed, the timestamps are getting updated. Like for example, T2, T3 and 3T. Let's consider we will have the one other, another transaction that is T4. Now T4 come at 1045. So if the transaction T4 is executing the data item and it is executing reading and writing both the instruction. So the read timestamp of the data item queue and the write, stamp, write timestamp of data item queue will get updated. So these timestamps are not fixed but they will update, uh, they will get updated according to the transactions execution. So this is all about timestamp. I hope this is clear to you. In the next lecture, we will see the timestamp ordering protocol. If you find any difficulty regarding this particular topic, you can write the write in comment box. Thank you.